Hi guys, I wanted to show you this CO2 yeast and gelatin method. Um, I have it set up so that it is compressed all the time. I probably gonna uh, uh, adjustable release valve in here. But as you can see, this is around 10 PSI right now. I have it go as as far as a uh, 20 psi but i need to replace this barrel i use a soda barrel that i was able to bring to a higher psi but it, it just didn't have enough volume to hold much of the co2 but with this method it's very efficient because i can i have a solenoid here as you guys can see i have a bunch of heat sinks attached to it because it's get very hot because it stay on for a few hours and this is a regulator i have the pressure regulator now down to around two psi and this is my line that goes to the top of the aquarium and then comes down and this is my co2 diy diffuser as you can see there are very fine bubbles coming out of it and this is a really efficient way to use it to use the gelatin with this method because now i only have my hour uh, my lights on for around 10 hours so if you just run the co2 for longer than those 10 hours let's say over the night or you just let it go out that co2 is being lost so what I'm doing, so out of 24 hours, if I only have my lights on for 10 hours, now I'm saving 14 hours of CO2 each day. That over time, they accumulate. So if this gelatin matter lasts me for, let's say, just to throw out there an arbitrary number, it lasts me for two months. Now, supposedly, it should last me for almost five months because I'm saving more than half each day on, on CO2. So the only thing that you need to be careful in here is that you need to get a proper bottle that holds the pressure. Um, I already ordered an adjustable bottle that I'm planning to adjust to not to go further than 25 PSI. Um, just having this adjusted here to 2 PSI and a low flow rate, it allows me to have these fine bubbles and a continuous flow and a very regulated flow because most of the complaint out there with the CO2 systems are that they're they not constant, they 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 they, they not, you cannot shut it down at night but this is not the case i have this hooked up to a microcontroller in here that i used to control all my i used to control all my lights and ph meters and heater system everything is being controlled from this even my humidity and exhaust system everything's being controlled from from this uh esp32 bore and uh and this relay rail over there um as you can see it works very very nice um efficient so, uh, so far i haven't have any problem at first when i have this idea i i went into looking for things to uh, uh, fermentation under pressure and I actually find out that this is something very commonly used on brewing, brewing beer. So there is a whole industry that will make um, th this type of things. You can buy a whole system just for brewing beer under pressure that will do the same thing. This is just me putting things together that I have around. But you can buy a whole system just designed for this from for for uh, brewing beer and the only thing you need to do is just have 
align with a regulator at the end to regulate how much pressure you want to go into the CO2 line going out. So, and this is constant pressure, const, uh, all the time. And you just need to, uh, uh, you can hook, hook it up to a timer or you can use a microcontroller and you will always have reliable CO2 that you can use for a very cheap price. So it, it, it's not, not, nothing, I don't know why having people like put this thing, this thing together, but it's gonna save you a lot of money. You just may have to do a little investment at first, but nothing, nothing even close to what you have to do if you buy a CO2 system. You just need to buy a regulator, probably like ten dollars, fifteen dollars, depending on how good you, do you want it to be. Probably a gauge for from fifteen to like this gauge here is from one to well, not this one. Sorry about that. Like this one in here is one from t one to thirty psi, or even fifteen. But I would say thirty or forty psi. I order one from one to to 40 psi which is it is good so the finest i don't think they're ever gonna use it up to 40 psi but it's good to have and the other thing i think the biggest investment that i'm looking at right now is the bottle because this bottle won't hold much pressure i i, I it's already deformed um it's already the phone due to the pressure so it won't hold much and um, before i have one of those pico con uh, glass jar and it didn't the 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 let the, the didn't seal well so I, I have to move on from now i may end up buying one of those uh containers from for growing beer and using that using that as a, they have a really nice good looking clear containers that they use for for brewing beer that they're a little expensive like around probably if you buy it here that the company that makes them is located in australia so it may cost you with the shipping a hundred and something or, or two hundred dollars but you can get it on ebay like for 70 $17 free shipping and um, uh, I may end up doing that and that's a uh, yeah you, you, you can just if you just go to YouTube and tell you have brewing under pressure or pressure fermentation you will find all the information that you need so the, I hope this got this helps somebody else to set up the system and this is all for, for now thank you